just got back from Australia. Anybody been to Australia? You been? It's a fun place. I recommend people go. I think it's a wonderful, diverse group of white people. And they're a crazy country. They're as far away as you can get. They're a little crazy, right? Like in the 60s, I didn't know this until I got there. One of the Australians told me. They had a prime minister named Harold Talt. And he went swimming in 1967. He never came back. They just voted for a new one. And then they named the National Swim Center after him. The guy who drowned. Swim Center. Could have been a statue, like, no, every pool. I have so many questions. That's mind blowing, right? Like, where was his security team? And can we hire them for our guy? I think that would be amazing. Where'd he go? I don't know. He was tweeting on a golf course, and then we never heard from him again. Calm down. All right, Jersey. Jersey, you've made your point. I get it. This audience is mostly white. I... That is really weird. For people who call us snowflakes, they're very sensitive. I... It was a joke. He hasn't had all the best plans. He wants to arm teachers. Really? All the teachers? Even the substitute teachers? Can we at least agree, all of us here, that they shouldn't get the guns? Substitute teachers. They should get substitute guns. You've all had substitute teachers. They can't even operate a goddamn VCR. You want to give them artillery? Crazy thing. I miss Obama, and I don't care what side of the aisle. No, we don't need to vote on it. Calm down. I gotcha. Sorry? Okay, calm down. You don't have sleeves. I. Let me finish my thought. I was saying, I don't care if you voted for him or not, I think it was just exciting for our country that we had a black president. That was exciting, our first black president. And technically, he wasn't. He was our first half black president, but we had him for two terms. So technically, we have a full black president. It's a math joke. It's a math joke. And he was interesting, right? He met, he was recently meeting up with the NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. Well, let's admit, not that advanced, they still use the term colored people. But they can't change it, right? They can't update it to African American, because then their group name would just be Nah. Nah. You call Al Sharpie, like, hey, you know any groups help us organize a march? She's like, Nah. Nah, son. Not a political joke, a wordplay joke. <laughs> you pounce too soon. I don't know, I'm just 31. Things have changed a lot in my lifetime. They have. 31, right? Like, I was, anybody here in their 20s? You're in your 20s? How old are you? You wish you were fair, I think we all do. The 20s, I could tell there's like still hope in this room, but I, it's a difference, right? Like, I'm in my 30s. I was the last generation. We were the last generation in human history to experience the rectal thermometer. <laughs> right? You don't know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. The rectal thermometer, right? You'd be like, Mom, I don't feel good. She would go to the medicine cabinet. She would take out a glass thermometer. That's just like a poisonous, hazardous metal wrapped in a fragile, breakable substance. <laughs> And then your mom, who has no medical training, would shove that in your asshole. Your tight, innocent, childhood asshole. And she would leave it there for three minutes. That's a very long time. She had to count that down one Mississippi at a time, right? She'd be like, one Mississippi, two Mississippi. You'd look up, make eye contact with your dad, he'd be like, no. Nope. And then he would leave. He would leave for years. Not all of them came back. After three minutes, your mom would rip that thing out. He'd say, mm, you're fine. No, no, I'm not fine. I'm shivering, I'm crying. I want a foil blanket. I'd like to talk to a counselor. Not fine. Might not be sick, but I'm definitely a victim. 50 years of that. 50 years of people using the rectal thermometer. And then right before you were born, some scientist was like, hey, you know you could use the ear too, right? Where have you been? Where have you been for half a century? What do you mean? When you were experimenting, you didn't like try any other hole first? 
Were you blindfolded? You were like, mm, boom, nailed him. No further testing. Release that upon the universe. Technology has changed. Like, I remember my first phone. Remember your first phone, that Nokia phone? That thing was a tank, right? You could drop that thing on a sidewalk, punch it into an ocean, come back four weeks later, 80% battery. You play that snake game for like a year. Now you gotta put a case on it. That's crazy, right? A company can charge you $1,000 for a product that is so fragile, you have to immediately run out by another product to protect the product you just bought. No other company does that, right? You never bought a jacket, you're like, is this jacket good in the rain? They're like, yeah, if you put another plastic jacket, you need a jacket case. Technology has changed. I have one of those Amazon Echoes. Have you seen those things? It's like a speaker. You, I walk into my room, I'm like, Alexa, turn on the lights in the living room. Boom, lights go on. Four days of that, I realized you won't be faster. Click. <laughs> so much faster. I'm yelling at this thing all day. I live alone, but I'm pretty sure my neighbors think I'm an abusive boyfriend. That's all they hear. Alexa, turn on the lights. The lights! Turn on the lights! Playing Billy Joel. I will end you. I will throw you in the garbage where you belong. Technology has changed. My mom is on Facebook. My mom. And she's uploading all the old family pictures. And she's doing it by taking iPhone pictures of the photos while they're still framed on the wall. And she doesn't turn the flash off, so every picture has that, like, reflection of her taking the picture of it. I had to call her. I was like, Mom, you need to put a shirt on. Like, it is. It's horrifying. Why is Dad not wearing pants on the couch? It's leather. It's gonna stick. It's insane. Technology is changing, right? It's changing so fast. He still looks angry. We're doing technology jokes, sir. They're not partisan. I, it's fine. It's fine. I know. I travel a lot for my job. I do. I travel a lot. I go all over the world. I get to experience all sorts of kinds of people. It's exciting. Like, I, I don't know about you guys. Do you guys like the pat down? The airline pat down? I don't. It's a little infringy, right? So I figured out a way to make them feel as uncomfortable as I feel. This is the key. You just vocalize a little bit. They hate that. They get down there to give you the pat down, just be like, yeah. They do not like that. They get down there and just like, mmm. You keep this up, there's gonna be an explosion. How many ounces are we allowed? Three, we're gonna need more bottles. More of those tiny bottles. I travel a lot. This had never happened until recently. I had a medical emergency on my plane. Anybody ever happened to? It was the first time. The, the pilot got on the intercom. He's like, is there a doctor on the plane? Is there a doctor? And the guy next to me was like, I'm a psychologist. I was like, sit the hell down. What are you going to do for that guy? Just stand over him? Like, are you angry you're going to die? You'd like me to call over a dentist so two people can't help you? The biggest trip that we're taking is out of country, as a country. We're going to Mars. Did you know that? That's pretty exciting. We are going to Mars, but it's a one-way trip. We only know how to get there. We don't know how to get them back. But there's still 100 finalists who want to go on this trip. You could read about them. One of them's a 23-year-old girl. She is quoted in the New Yorker as saying, I am so excited, and my boyfriend is so supportive. <laughs> Honey, he's breaking up with you. Like, he's literally counting down to the cleanest breakup in human history. Like, he's standing in that launch pad, like, I love you! Ten! Nine! I'm dating your sister! Alright, guys, it's been great. My name is Harrison Greenwald. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you.